Hey everyone. I'm here today. I'm going to be doing a flower on a jello mold this time. And I learned some techniques over the weekend from a wonderful guy named Scott Alexander Rivera. And he had some really cool techniques that he did. So I wanted to incorporate that <clears throat> with my bunt pan jello mold um, flower that I'm doing. So I found this, well, a client of mine found this for me at an antique store, Jello Mold. Uh, it says seven cups on it. Uh, this is a 14 by 14 inch canvas. So this is probably about an eight inch mold, if I had to guess. So that will be what we're going to be pouring over today. Um, and I'm going to show you some really cool techniques that he showed on his video. Uh, how to work with the center when you're done taking that off because it leaves such a big hole. So today I'm going to be putting down my base. I'm going to use a white base. Uh, I'm just going to tell you the colors as I go. So I've got my uh, white acrylic flow by Artist Loft. Uh, I've only got Floetrol in here and I have it thinned down with a mixture of Floetrol and water. 90% water, 10% Floetrol. So I'm just gonna move this around. He did something really cool with the background that I really liked. So I'm gonna try that as well, see what I come up with. I did one yesterday that was kind of an experiment that I showed a picture of on the Parage Posse. Facebook page. Okay, let's get some of that off of there. You want to have a base coat down, but you don't want to have too much of a base coat down. So make sure you get some of the runoff off of there especially since you're going to be pouring paint over your jello mold you're going to have lots of paint in the center so get as much off as you can just have enough there that you can that helps the paint run this is kind of like a bottle bottom pour that you would do So all of my paints today, uh, none of them have silicone in them. You can use silicone if you want to, but it just makes your flower a little bit more wobbly looking if you are putting fresh silicone in and it's gonna be, it's gonna give you big cells. It's gonna make your flower look a little bit wobbly. Okay, so I have my base coat down. I'm gonna pop any bubbles. Just give it a quick, quick torch. Got something over here. Get rid of that. Okay, so we are ready to. St oh, so I want to do a little bit of uh, something on my background that he did that I thought was really cool. Um, you're just going to drizzle some lines, and I'm using three different colors of green. That was uh, Tisa Prussian Green. This is uh, Basics Liquitex Hooker's Green. They're kind of similar, but they're a little different. And then I'm going to use the Deco Art Sour Apple. Just to give a little punch of lighter. I probably have too much color on here, but I wanted to have kind of a green greenish background so and I already see a pet hair probably a bandit hair who is my huge um, he's a shepherd lab mix and he's about 150 60 pounds so he's huge and he was just in here so he left a hair for me anyhow so you just squiggle some lines in 
and then just go through and do some you can use uh, any tool you want to just kind of uh, mute those lines a little bit And you can move them around a little bit. Just to give it a little bit more organic look. And again, run some of that paint off the canvas. Turn that around so I can pour towards you. So it just gives you a little bit of a background to put your flower on. Let's run it off a little bit over here. I think uh, Christina and I had the same idea today because she put out a new video, Christina Welch, and she did a green background with a flower. But we're both very different in our approaches, so hopefully you guys won't get bored with the flower stuff. Great minds think alike, right, Christina? I'm just going to touch a little bit of white there. I didn't like that. Okay, so now we're going to put our jello mold down. Uh, hopefully I'm still, yep, yeah, make sure I'm in the frame. So I'm going to put the jello mold down. Oh, that wants to move around. Let me see. I must have... Uh, uneven. Still a little uneven. Let me see. Let me pick that up. Good to know it's uneven now because uh, When I start pouring my flour, I don't want it to be uneven. I wonder why it's doing that. Okay, let's try it again. Okay, now we're good. Gotta love glitches when you're on camera. It's always fun. Got some bubbles here on the pot. That background is really pretty. I'm really liking that. Thank you, Scott. All right, so now we're gonna start pouring some paint. Um, I did my color chart. I think I wanna start with uh, one of the darker colors. I have um, Basics Prism Violet and Cad Red Deep that I have mixed. It's my own mix. Start out with that. And I'm just going in the grooves. And I found out yesterday that these don't really follow the groove down, but they do make petals. So I'm okay with that. All right. And you can check and see where 
You have some smaller petals if you want to go back and just add a little bit to those. So you kind of get a uniform. I'm wondering if one of my push pins came out underneath. Okay, and on top of that, I'm going to put my pink color flash because color the color flash on top of a darker color uh, gives you a really cool effect. I'm hoping I have enough pink color flash to get through this. I bought some more today, but I was running a little bit behind on filming, so I didn't want to mix up some more. I think we'll be okay. I'm just going to do two layers of this because the canvas isn't that big. In fact, we'll have to see. I might not even get through two colors. Okay. Where do I want to go from here? Um, let's do the black. I have black, metallic black. Artist Loft metallic black. These paints are mixed equal parts. Um, equal parts with paint and Elmer's glue all. And then I double that amount with Floetrol. They're, they are a little bit on the thicker side, but for the bottle bottom pours and when I do my trivets and this type of thing, I want them a little bit thicker because I want to keep the paints from moving around too much. Okay, that was uh, Arteza Silver. And now I'm going to be using a Deep Magenta by Artist Loft. And then I have a mixture of Dioxazine Purple and Prism Violet, both by Basics. I mix the two of them because the Dioxazine by itself is pretty dark. So I like not so dark, a little bit lighter. So I mix a little bit of that Prism Violet in there. I'm liking the colors so far. Yeah, I think we're only going to get one round of colors. I might go back in with some more of that color flash, the pink flash. Because we're already running off our sides. But I'm going to pull that back in when you see when I move my pan, it leaves a big hole. And that was something I learned from, uh-oh, uh uh-oh. Uh run out. <laughs> I told you that might happen. Oh, barely made it. Not going to be as much of that on this side. All right, let's let it drip down a little bit since I need as much of that pink as I can get down there. I'm thinking I want to put a little bit more of that, um, the outer color, the red, prism violet and red. Just a touch because I'm probably going to lose a lot of what's on the edges. When you're doing these bigger ones, you probably need a bigger canvas. At least probably a 16 by 16 or a 20 by 20. But I was out of those. 
So these you have to really be careful when you pick them up because they are slippery and they like to suction to the canvas. All right. Get some little paper towels here. Now, this is one of the tricks that I learned from Scott over the weekend that I love, and it's really kind of magical to watch. So here we go. And by the way, this does not ruin your canvas, which I thought it might. I'm gonna, before I do that, I'm gonna pop some bubbles, because I see lots of them. Okay, so all you're doing is you're taking a paintbrush, you know, a bigger size. Uh, if you can find, actually, I think I'm gonna use this one because it's bigger on the bottom. And you're just gonna put it in the center of your canvas and push down. And you can see slowly everything is moving to the center. So it's kind of cool because it pulls in your, your paint, brings your petals back down into the center, stretches them out a little bit. And you're probably thinking, oh my gosh, what is she going to do with all that paint in the center? Well, I'm going to show you. It's pretty cool. unless you've already watched Scott Alexander, and then you know. Okay. I have a syringe. Okay. And I'm just gonna, I pushed it all the way down, and I'm just gonna put that in the center and suck the paint out. Nice sound, huh? Push it down, let it come to the center. And then suck it out. Okay, and as you can kind of see, it's already starting to make its own little center there too from the suction. I'm actually pushing down with the syringe. Okay. I go one more time. Because I want to get rid of as much of that green as I can get out of there. I'm going to be swirling it too, so some of that will go away when I swirl. Some of it is okay in there. I just don't want too much of it in there. Okay, so you can see how that really brought that center together. I'm gonna suction a little bit more out of there. Such a lovely sound. All right, now I'm gonna go in with a smaller end and I'm just gonna hit all the petals and I'm gonna swirl in the center. Wipe your paintbrush off after you do it. I'm 
Try to swirl in the same direction. That just pulls everything to the center and gives you a swirly center. Now I'm going to go back in, suction out some more of this, paint in the center. When you swirl like that, the center gets a little muddy. So you want to go back in. Take some of that out. Just want to give it one last swirl in the center. And there you go. There's your flower. Um, I wish it was lighter in the middle, so I think I'm going to stick some of that. I'm going to put a little drop of silver in the center. And I'm going to swirl that around with my brush. Just twirling it. Put it back in the center and up. Up, oh, took it all away. <laughs> I have, obviously, I have too much paint in the center still. If you have some white out here, you can pull that into the center when you swirl, and that's what will happen. But I don't have a lot of that, so that's what's happening with my... There we go. I grabbed some of that silver from that petal and took that around. So now we have a nice swirly center. And there you are. That's it, I'm gonna let it dry. It should dry fine, because I've sucked out a lot of that paint that was in the center. Um, I didn't have to do any stretching, which was nice, because you're actually stretching back into the center with that jello mold. And I'm sure some more of this will drip off the sides as it dries a little bit. Wipe my sides here. So please like and share and subscribe if you haven't already. And I do a video every Monday. So, well, I should say every Tuesday. I usually film on, sometimes I film on Monday. But I will be here. I'm still not happy with that center. Um, I'm here filming every Tuesday. And so there's a new video every Tuesday. So if you hit that little bell, uh, that will give you when my videos are loaded. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next week.